Hey everyone, in this video, I'm upgrading the headlight in this scooter to LED. The old incandescent light is pretty dim. I can barely see where I'm going at night. The beam pattern is good enough, and the high beam shines a bit farther. Let's adjust it a bit. It's not bad, but there just isn't very much light here. The classic style Chinese scooters have a round headlight with a metal ring holding the lens. Take the bolt out and expand the ring with your fingers to get it off. The lens is plastic. Here's a closer look. The ring just holds everything together. Pull the reflector out and now we have access to the connector. Just push and turn to disconnect it. Take the spring out, then take the light bulb out. Most Chinese scooters will have a 35 watt light bulb. This is very important because the charging system can't support a bigger bulb. Installing a 50 watt bulb will drain your battery. This bulb style is called P15D. I found a replacement LED bulb on Amazon, $16 and you get two. What a deal! And the reviews are good too. Everyone had a good experience with these? Hard to believe, but I'll check it out. Here's the box. It has a black cat on the front. Cats have excellent night vision. Does this mean you must also have good vision in order to use these bulbs? Inside, there are two gold light bulbs. Fancy smancy, but the best part is the back of the box. Speciality, anti-tradition design and model. Add the new lighting style. Fashion style, the far field of vision and clear makes more safety. Don't keep your eyes on the lamp when it was turned on. Past tense, it's probably too late at this point. If you follow up the in at all, not a word, fig, but still not turn on the light, please change the socket driction, also not a word, to get the right place. I guess they couldn't find anyone to proofread this stuff before they mass produced it. I wonder if they paid the same amount of attention to the quality of the light bulb. Line up the little tab with the slot in the reflector and drop the new bulb into place. Install the spring and line up the tabs on the connector. It's idiot proof and only goes on one way. Let's check out the new light. There isn't much difference between the low and high beam. It seems like an extra pair of LEDs turn on with the low beam and it's slightly brighter. Weird. Okay, the high and low beams are swapped. This LED is wired incorrectly. The dimmer switch worked fine with the old light bulb. The light socket has a round piece inside with tabs 180 degrees apart. I'm pushing it in at an angle so I can pop it out. Now I'm just rotating the terminals 180 degrees to swap the high and low beam wiring. Make sure to hook the top of the reflector into the tab at the top of the headlight housing. This time the low beam and high beam corresponds to the correct position on the dimmer switch. The plastic lens has a small arrow that points to the bottom of the headlight and the stripes should be oriented vertically. Hold the lens and top decorative piece as you install the ring that holds everything together. You'll have to spread it apart to get it on. Install the screw and tighten the nut to finish the headlight assembly. Okay, the white light looks pretty bright. Not much of a difference between the high and low beam just looking at it. Out in the street, it looks like a bright headlight. Let's go test it. This is low beam and that's high beam. Let's adjust it a little. Low beam and high beam. That high beam does almost nothing. Now let's compare. It's easy to get fooled into thinking the white light is brighter than the yellow one. If you look closely, the beam is much wider with the old bulb and it reaches all the way over to the sidewalk. There is more light overall with the old incandescent light than with the new LED. Switching over to high beams, you can barely tell the difference with the LED. The old incandescent light is shining about twice as far and filled in more right in front of the scooter too. The old light has a better beam pattern and puts out twice as much light as the LED. You know, it's funny this box says green in an energy saving because when you make shit that goes straight in the landfill, that's not very green. Okay, just kidding. I won't be throwing these away. I bought this on Amazon, so I'll be returning it. And Amazon will throw these LEDs in the ocean or feed them to African children or whatever it is that they do with electronics that are bad. Now, I still want to upgrade this headlight to LED, so let's try something else. My scooter has a 5-inch headlight. That's not a standard size for a motorcycle, and there aren't any good LED kits available for it. I could replace the bucket with the 5.75 inch size and I'll have more options. 
I could get this light right here. It's 36 watts, so that's good. It's a work light, and it looks like it's only a flood light. It might be good for a low beam, but it doesn't have a high beam built in. This headlight is the best option. It's an LED headlight with a bucket, so theoretically they have heat dissipation already figured out for the whole assembly. It's rated at 30 watts low beam and 45 watts high beam. Remember my scooter should have a 35 watt bulb. If I run only high beams, I might run the battery down. The other option is just throw some off-road lights on the scooter. These lights are 18 bucks for a pair. What a deal! They say 60 watts, but a couple reviewers measured the power and said it's 12 watts each. I don't know why they would lie about the specifications. This light says it's a spotlight and a floodlight. That is also a lie. You can tell it's a floodlight because it has many small LEDs. I still want to get a high beam, so this super spotlight from Nylite seems like it will work. Somewhere in the description they tell you it's a 10 degree beam angle and takes 10 watts of power. Same company, but this time it seems like they're telling the truth about the specs. Weird. I ordered the off-road lights and I need to measure the power since the seller can't be trusted to tell the truth. My battery is 12.4 volts. The floodlight, rated at 60 watts, is taking 1.08 amps from the battery. That means it's a 13.4 watt light. The spotlight is using 10.9 watts of power. I can use both lights together and my scooter battery won't die. Chinese scooters use the lowest quality plastic for the body panels, so Gorilla Tape does a better job holding things together than screws. My scooter still has some screws, but they're just going into cracked plastic and don't do much. Alright, let's get that front panel off. The headlight is held on by a bolt and a nut. Two small bolts hold the headlight bracket. I'm unplugging the headlight and testing the voltage with the engine running. The low beam shows 0 volts DC. Weird. I'm switching the voltmeter to AC. This scooter uses alternating current instead of direct current for the headlight. The LED bulb I used earlier was compatible with AC, but the new LEDs require DC. I'll need to rewire the dimmer switch. The brown, white, and blue wires are for the headlight. The black wire is DC power for the horn. It's on when the key is on. I'm cutting the brown wire because I don't want the AC power from the scooter. I'm splicing into the black wire because it has DC power. I'll connect the brown headlight wire to the black wire. This switch is wired to turn the low beams or the high beams on. I want the low beams to stay on all the time, so I'm connecting the white wire directly to power. This way, when I turn on the high beam, the low beam also stays on. The brown wire is cut off at the connector, and the black, brown, and white wires are all connected together. I made this fancy bracket that holds both my off-road lights. Just some cutting and welding, no big deal. The smaller light is the high beam. The new bracket bolts on the same way as the old bracket did. The bolt that holds the lights on the bracket allows me to adjust both lights right and left. The allen key lets me adjust the high beam up and down. This bolt back here lets me adjust the low beam up and down. I cut the connector and wiring off the old headlight and I'm connecting it to the new off-road lights. Green is ground for both lights, white is low beam power, and blue is high beam power. Let's test the lights. Key on and the low beam is on. Hit the dimmer switch and the high beam turns on too. It looks like they work so I can put my scooter back together. The new off-road lights look different. They definitely don't match the style of this scooter. I'm checking the power of the old incandescent light. It's about 31 watts. I want to make sure the new lights don't use more power than that. The LED low beam light is taking 15 watts. With both of them on, we have 26.5 watts. Great, that's less power than before. Out in the street, I'm getting a nice, even, white light in front of the scooter. The high beam shines much farther down the road. It's a slightly more yellow color. Compared to the old incandescent light, the LED gives me a more even light. It shines slightly farther and starts closer to the scooter too. I would say this is better. The high beam is reflecting off the road signs more and lights up the trees a little too. There is definitely more total light with the new headlights. All right, this new light setup, well, it's very ugly. But with this old ragamuffin of a scooter, I don't think I care. 
These lights are available on Amazon, so if you'd like to get the same ones, just follow the links in the video description below. And as always, thanks for watching, and remember to check out my other scooter repair videos.